it's important to be able to use the terminal, but it's even more important to be able to use it efficiently. And I'm gonna be showing you how to do just that. Um, there's actually a, a bunch of um, tips and tricks, I guess, that I wanna show you that will actually, I guess, speed up your product productivity or make things more efficient when you use the terminal. And the first, the first two I actually think are very important and you'll actually see me use them in a lot of videos. And that is the right angle and the double right angle, um, or right bracket, whatever you want to call it, operator. And essentially these two operate very similarly, similarly, but they do two different things. So it's best not to get, get them confused. And I'll show you what, uh, what they do in a, right in a moment. But first, um, let's just say I want to take some text and put it into a file. So for example, I'm going to take the output of this echo command and put it into a file. Um, I could just, you know, copy and paste it into a file, but and that's, you know, I have to, you have to highlight it, copy it, open a text editor, paste it into the file. It takes a while. Um, and with a long, with a long amount of text, like, um, for example, I have this thin file that it's a longer amount of text, but it's not too long. But with um, files that are or strings that are really long, it takes a while to copy and paste it. So what you can do instead is you can actually take you can actually take this and redirect redirect the output into a file. So that's what the right and double right angle uh, uh, brackets are for. So I can redirect that into a file. Just call it stuff. And so now you see it didn't print anything to the terminal, but we have a file called stuff and it has our stuff in it, our text. And that's really what the right angle and the double right angle operators do, but they do it slightly differently. See what the single right, um, what, the, what the single one does is it actually uh, overwrites the file with our, uh, with our text, but the double right one actually appends it to a file and adds it onto a file. So if I run this again with the double right angle, you'll see that it appended it to our file. Now we have two things that say cool. If I run this again, the single right angle um, operator, you'll see that it'll overwrite everything and just put cool in our file. So that's really the basics of using um, those two operators. Really simple to use, but they can do a lot of things. Um, let's see, let's, yeah, let me remove this stuff file. Um, and essentially you can actually use it to copy file, entire files. So for example, let me cat update.mkv. If I actually, I can redirect that to, let's just say, okay.mkv. And as you can see, we now just copied the, our entire file over to something else. So if I run okay.mkv, Sorry, that's the wrong program, not XXID, um, mkv, okay.mkv. You'll see that we just copied our entire file. So that's really what those two operator, operators do, essentially. And of course, there's a few more I have to show you because there are so many they can use, but it's they're all great. There's the pipe operator, which is very important because it actually lets you link two programs to each other and with um, text, and it's, it's honestly amazing. So if I want to output, this is text. If I want to take that and actually pipe that into the program, I can do that. So for example, let's pipe that into um, awk. How about that? And what awk can do is awk can manipulate text streams. So we can say, we can give awk the command, hey, print dollar sign one, which will print the first, um, the first word in our sentence, which is this. And as you see, it prints this. And of course, dollar, if I give it dollar sign two, it'll print is, dollar sign three is text, and so on and so forth. Um, we can also pipe stuff to other programs as well. For example, sent will actually uh, turn plain text into presentations that we can actually present. And as you, as you can see, it turned our output into a slide for a presentation. So that's really the basics of piping. And of course, basically almost all every terminal program supports, you know, um, piping things into it. 
Um, it's really amazing the things you can do with it. Um, but I think I think I might make an entire video on piping because it's you can do a lot. But that's the basics of it. And there's another operator I want to show you, and it's the single ampersand operator. And what this does is if I run a program, let's just say sleep, oh, misspelled that, 10, or sleep 5. And what this will do is this will just sleep for 5 seconds. So it will go dead for 5 seconds, and after 5 seconds, we can input stuff into the terminal. If I actually give this an ampersand, a single ampersand, you'll see that it will spit this thing out. And what this, what this, this says is 1 and this other number right here. What this is, is this one is our job number, and this longer number right here is actually our process ID. And as you can see, as I was talking, that spit out, uh, our, that actually finished running. So what this does is a single ampersand just runs stuff in the background, and it gives us our job number and our process ID. And when it finishes, it'll just say, it'll just spit out done. And here, let me just actually increase this time. And while this is running, if we actually run, uh, run the command jobs, you can actually see that we have our job running in the background. And of course, we can run multiple jobs at the same time. So now we have our jobs. And this um, that's what the single ampersand operator does, is it just takes the command you run and puts it into a background job, which you can, you know, um, which you can run the, have run the background while you're doing whatever else in the terminal. And so that's how you use that. And now there's two more operators that I want to show you, and that is the double ampersand and the double pipe symbol. And these do, um, these are actually separate from the pipe symbol and the ampersand, but they do um, similar things to each other. So let's just say I want to run two commands sequentially. I want to run, I want to wait five seconds, and after I wait, waited five seconds, I want to echo five seconds have passed. So if I run that, what the double ampersand does is it will, if the first command succeeds, it will run the second command. So in this case, we wait five seconds, so now five seconds have passed. The, the double pipe operator does almost the same thing. If I run that, we'll wait five seconds. Give it a moment. And you'll see that it doesn't actually print out five seconds have passed because the because the um, these two two operators differ in a big way, in a fun fundamental way. The double ampersand operator runs the second command at the first one succeeds. The double pipe operator runs the second command at the first one fails. So if I give this a command that fails, for example, if I say cat some random file that doesn't exist. It will go ahead and run our echo command, which says, which says five seconds have passed, or in this case, the <laughs> the command itself failed. And so that's the double ampersand, the double pipe operator. And there's actually one more thing that I want to show you, which is pretty interesting, and that is actually um, silencing programs. And a lot of programs actually have an option to silence them, but some of them don't. And there actually is a universal way to silence programs. So. If I cat, um, if I cat a random file, let's just say, um, let's just say a local or a, um, just a random file. Let's go this one. Um, if I want to silence the output of this somehow, what I can do is I can actually redirect this. If you're paying attention, you actually connect the dots. We can actually redirect this into slash dev slash null. And what slash dev slash null is, is it's basically on every Linux or Unix system. It's a file that's basically, you can dump anything in and it's like a bottomless pit. Um, anything you, anything you will put, you put in slash dev slash null will never appear, ne never see the light of day. So if I run that, you get nothing. And you may be wondering, well, what's the use for that? Well, if you actually have errors like this that you don't want to display. So if I want a cat, a random file, and I don't want the errors or any really any output to display whatsoever. You can actually pi uh, redirect that into slash dev slash null. But wait a minute, it just failed. Now why is that? Well, because we're 
by default, the right angle bracket redirects standard output into whatever file, in this case, slash dev slash null. But what we want to do is we want to direct this, redirect standard error into uh, this file. So what we can do is we can put a two there, and this will redirect standard error into our file that we want, in this case, null. And so that will basically get rid of any errors that we have whatsoever. And so really that's uh, a few tips, I guess, and tricks to using the terminal more efficiently and I guess getting more stuff done and uh, you know not being confused about all these weird symbols that are in the terminal. Uh, but yeah, that's really it. I hope you guys found this useful.